Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town, and today I'm going to be taking famous creepypasta characters and trying to make a kid show out of them, as well as drawing them in a super cartoony style. I know this is a really strange idea, but I really feel like we can do it. Um, and I wanted to start off with Jeff the Killer, as you can see. Uh, now, I actually remember seeing Jeff the Killer's picture all over the internet when I was a kid. Um, he was really the first creepypasta character that I was really aware of, and I feel like he will be a great like center character for our new creepypasta creepypasta kids show because you know he's got this very nice smile um, and his eyes are very uh, wide and excitable like you know uh, a lot of a lot of cartoon characters are like that he also doesn't have a nose so um, he already looks more like a cartoon character than than the average person um, so he canonically doesn't have eyelids they got like burned off or something um, honestly I can barely remember the story of Jeff the killer I'm pretty sure that it was really badly written especially uh, originally so um, I don't necessarily recommend reading it, but basically all you really need to know about him is that he's like a serial killer um, and he's really scary because his eyes are really wide and his mouth is cut like the Joker is, so he's got like this big scary smile. Um, and he always says, go to sleep. That's like his uh, signature phrase. So I decided to, um, you know, really capture that excitable uh, expression on his face. I decided to keep his hair slicked back the way it is in the original image of him. Um, even though most fan art of Jeff the Killer kind of draws him as like an anime hot boy with like the shaggy traditional anime hair. Um, and you know, I would never uh, you know, take a take a killer and try to make them a, a hot anime boy. So I, I truly don't condone this behavior. Uh, <laughs> um, but anyway, at least with this one, I'm gonna try to keep it really on on model. You know, for for the photo, um, since we're already changing the style so dramatically from like a you know realistic photo edit to a full on cartoon. I also gave him a flashlight. I wanted him to be holding a knife at first, but then I was like, there's no way um, that that's gonna work for my kids show. So I I'm gonna give him a flashlight like he's telling you a scary story or sneaking up on you in the dark. And just like that, he's all done. So we have our main character. Now it's time to move on to the parental figure. So for this role, I thought Slenderman was an obvious choice. Slenderman is kind of the father of creepypasta characters. He completely took over the internet for many years in a row, um, and it's already in his lore that he steals away children, so I thought that he would be perfect in this particular spot. Now, in a lot of kids shows, there is like that mentor or um, parental sort of character. Sometimes they're like literally the character's parents, um, like the professor in Powerpuff Girls, um, sometimes they're like an older sibling, sometimes they're fairy godparents. Um, it just kind of depends on the um, show, but usually there is at least one person like sort of structured above um, all the other characters hi hierarchically. Um, and so for that, I definitely thought Slenderman would be perfect. I really wanted to lean into the way I could make Slenderman kind of cute or wholesome looking. Now, obviously we're gonna have to keep the long stretched out limbs, but I thought if we sort of made them rubber hosey, um, kind of more of like an adventure time sense of anatomy. It could make him look really fun, uh, even though he is so elongated, which is usually quite creepy. Um, and I think that really works quite well. So we're just avoiding any like hard joints in the knees and elbows. Um, and it just makes him look sort of like stretchy and elastic um, rather than like this spindly horror monster. And I really like the idea of him like having to snatch away and confiscate things from the other um, kids. <laughs> kids in this uh, strange creepypasta orphanage scenario that <laughs> I've started to cook up. Um, so I gave him a pair of scissors in his hand because I just thought that would be a perfect thing to confiscate from these dangerous kids. Um, and I had him reaching out uh, for something else, which I don't know yet what I'm going to put there, but I definitely think that this is going to provide like sort of a dynamic way for your eyes to be traveling within the illustration. I also gave him a little apron so that his sort of caretaker role is even more obvious. And I tried to show as best as I could his expression despite him being technically expressionless. Um, and I think it worked out pretty well. Honestly, Slenderman is maybe my favorite part of the drawing so far, um, just because his limbs are so fun to draw and so like weird and bendy. 
Um, so next up, I wanted to add in a non-human-esque um, sort of creature, and I thought Smile Dog would be perfect. Smile Dog was a pretty famous um, creepypasta, definitely not on the level of Jeff the Killer or Slenderman, but basically it was this idea that um, there's a scary picture of like a husky with human teeth, and if you looked at the picture, you would die. It was kind of like an offshoot of like the ring, um, where if you watch the video, you'll die in seven days, but. It's just like a, a JPEG of a dog with human teeth. Um, and I thought that was perfect because dogs in um, animated shows oftentimes have more like human characteristics anyway. So giving him the big old Steven Universe bean smile was actually not gonna be too scary. And I thought it would be great if the dog is running away with a knife um, so that Slenderman can be uh, worried and trying to take it away. Um, I just really, I, I can never find this particular uh, creepypasta scary. I don't know why, I'm just not very scared of dogs. Um, <laughs> so the image of like the husky with the human teeth, even though it has like a weird red filter over it and um, you know, it's, it's edited to look very menacing. <laughs> I never really was scared by this one, um, but it's very popular and I know it really scared a lot of people. So I thought he would be a really good addition here. Um, basically I'm just drawing, I mean, I'm just drawing a dog with a big old smile um, and because he's a husky i can put in these eyebrows that also look very cartoony um, and then i just did sort of a red overlay layer the way that the actual picture looks um sharpened up the look of the knife and then it you know he just really fits in here i think he's a really good pick for this particular um <laughs> this cartoon show that I'm fake making. I also gave him a little blush to make him even cuter. He, he definitely has a very human face expression, but it's just not, it's not scary in this style. <laughs> Next up, I wanted to add in the rake. Um, I, this is one of the pictures that actually did scare me when I was first sort of looking into creepypasta as a youngling. Um, and I think it's because it has more of like a cryptid vibe, especially with the way that it's like a grainy black and white photo. It looks like it was taken on like a wildlife camera that you can find out on like tr like hiking trails and stuff. Um, it just makes it feel more real. And I knew right away with the bald head and the like not wearing clothes or anything that this would be perfect um, as like the baby of the group uh, just like there's always a parent role there's often a like younger character um, in kids shows I think it's actually so that kids relate with it more so they feel like the show's not babying them too much by presenting a smaller baby uh, the only sort of um, example of this not necessarily being the case is maybe like Rugrats but even then sometimes there's younger characters than Tommy so um, yeah it seems to be like a pretty good baseline uh, to have like one much older character and one baby character so that the kids that are meant to be watching the show can identify with the main character the way you want them to. Um, so this is our this is our show baby. Um, it's this horrifying creature that supposedly was seen by multiple people uh, crawling around on all, all, all hands and knees and just generally being a terrifying semi-human shaped creature um, that you can only see uh, in the night with its reflective eyes and everything. <laughs> so this little baby rake is uh, hanging on to Slenderman's shoulder. He is an overworked single father. Um, this is definitely stressful for him. I also added in a little extra detailing on his apron just to make it a little cuter at this point. And lastly, just to add a best friend for our main character, Jeffrey, um, I wanted to add in Laughing Jack. Now, Laughing Jack is, in his original story, an imaginary friend. He's a clown um, who seeks to comfort and befriend um, the boy that he originally lived with and it was imagined by. Um, but once he was forgotten about, he became this monochromatic uh, serial killer um, and uh, basically like came to life and has demonized powers and whatnot um, but in this version laughing Jack is going to be a little bit more emphasis on the laughing uh, he's going to be the comedy character and generally just the uh, light-hearted fun character who always brings the jokes that uh, Jeff can react to um, I actually think this little like striped cone nose that he has is actually pretty cute um, especially if you change up the style a little I can see how it's scary in like the original illustrations of uh, laughing 
named Jack, but when he's a young kid, it just makes him look like an adorable little emo scarecrow kind of thing. Um, and he also has these like long sleeves that I decided to make even longer and just give him these like cute little sweater paws. Um, he's got weird suspenders on, so I ended up giving him a little set of black overalls. And he has this almost Ryuk-like um, fluffy bit at the top of his outfit. I didn't see a problem with it, so I kept it. Um, it looks a little weird, but all together, I think his design is actually adorable. Um, I tried to allude to his like weird black clown lipstick that he has, but I ended up going pretty light on it since he is supposed to be aged down and it just looked kind of weird. And he also has very sharp teeth, but I just showed it as one cute little thing um, so that I didn't destroy the, the cuteness of the character too much. Um, and honestly, I think that uh, that just about wraps it up for the cast. Now, I still have to design the background for this illustration as well as the logo for the show. Um, so now that Laughing Jack is all done, I'm going to get started on that. Now, uh, I'm going to name this show Slendy's Home for Imaginary Killers, I think. Um, it's based on the the, uh, logo and title sort of design um, of Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. I just thought it kind of fits perfectly and I think that it's, <laughs> I don't know, it's cute. Um, I also like calling him Slendy, it just, just makes him sound less scary. <laughs> um, and since they are all like imagined up um, for creepy pasta purposes. They are all technically imaginary, so I think it works pretty well. Um, and that is the structure of Foster's home. You know, it's it's a kind of an orphanage with a bunch of kids all hanging out um, with only a few beleaguered adults to try to rein them in. So it all works perfectly. Um, I put Slenderman's little like weird forest mansion in the back, um, as well as some like fencing. I did some textures over the top just to make it look more authentic, and then. And there we have it. Um, I, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. I haven't done anything creepypasta related in a while, so this was kind of me just dipping my toes back in. Um, definitely let me know if you have any creepypastas you'd like to me to make a creepy drasta reading of. Um, and thank you so much for watching till the end. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much to my patrons, including Kelly Halsey, Kuboroshi, Mumuk, Alana the Artist, Rylan Parker, Rylan, Kadaria, Something Super, Deadly Nightshade Art, Maria Vasquez, Astro Fox Art, Middle Z, Lilia Lur, The Espresso Poker Face, Morrissey, Axolotl, Chris Draws, Kai Kieser, Tsubaki, The Becky, Liliana Hemantri, Mia Lavali, Angel File, Cutie Pie, Nicole Ludwak, Nicolette Queen, Rainwater Pearls, Ice Cream Pal, Lion, Alaria Louie, Nora Cornelson, Cola, Rachel Singh, Yoboya C, JJ Jade, and of course, Blah 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 Blah.